Hello and welcome to my channel called Statistics from A to Z, Confusing Concepts Clarified. These videos are based on content from my book of the same name, which is published by Wiley. For more information on the book and these videos, please visit statisticsfromatoz.com. This is the sixth of six videos in a playlist on ANOVA and related concepts. There are four videos on ANOVA only, and there is one comparing and contrasting ANOVA and regression. This sixth video is about analysis of means, ANOM, which does something that ANOVA cannot do. As usual in the book and in these videos, we'll go quickly through a list of keys to understanding, or key to use, and then we'll go into detailed explanations of each of the keys. For ANOM, there are three key to use. The first key to understanding is, number one, analysis of means, ANOM, tells us which means of samples from several populations or processes are statistically different from the overall mean. The second KTU says that ANOM has some similarities to and some differences from ANOVA. Key to understanding number three tells us that the output from an ANOM is graphical and that it displays a confidence interval. Let's now begin our detailed explanations of each key to understanding. KTU number one says analysis of means, ANOM, tells us which means of samples from several populations or processes are statistically different from the overall mean. With ANOVA, we can only find out whether one or more sample means are different from the others to a statistically significant degree. ANOVA cannot tell us which one or which ones are different. This limits its usefulness. ANOM overcomes this shortcoming. ANOM compares the means of samples from several populations or processes. For example, samples taken from different manufacturing plants. These populations or processes are identified by name. For example, the Chicago plant, the Detroit plant, and the East Point plant. The comparison is among the values of a numerical var variable y. For example, comparing the mean number of defects per thousand items produced in each plant. ANOM can tell us which, if any, of the plants have defect rates that are significantly different from the overall mean. Key to understanding number two. ANOM has some similarities to and some differences from ANOVA. First, ANOM and ANOVA have these similarities. They both require that the data be distributed approximately normally. They both analyze variation of several means. Both are usually used with three or more means. For two means, there is the two-sample t-test. And both can perform one-way analyses, that is, with one x variable, or they can perform two-way analyses with two x variables. But they are different in how they measure variation. This will be explained in the following slides. And as we explained in Keto Understanding number one, ANOM can identify which means are different, ANOM cannot. ANOM calculates the overall mean, also known as the grand mean. It then measures the distance from that overall mean to each sample mean. In this conceptual diagram, each sample is depicted by a normal curve. The distance between each sample mean and the overall mean is identified as a variation. ANOM retains the, identify, the identity of the source of each of these variations, number one, number two, and number three and it displays this graphically in the ANOM chart, which we'll show later in this video. In ANOVA, the variation between each sample mean and the overall mean is calculated as sums of squares between SSBs. There is one SSB for each sample. Then, the mean of these SSBs is calculated. This is the mean sum of squares between 
or MSB. This value of MSB is then used in the next step of the calculation. The information in the individual contributions from each sample, the SSB, is lost when we calculate the mean of the SSB. In this example, the information in three SSBs is distilled down into one MSB. So in the next step of the ANOVA calculation, which uses only the MSB, it is impossible to identify how much of the variation is due to each sample. That is why ANOVA cannot identify which sample or samples have a statistically significant difference from the overall mean. For more on this, see the ANOVA Part 2 video or that article in the book. Let's illustrate how ANAM does it with an example. Let's say we own seven manufacturing plants in seven cities. We want to see if there is a statistically significant difference in any of the plants, either good or bad. For each of five days, we collect data on the number of defects per thousand items produced. Then, for each plant, we calculate the means. We can see from the data that East Point has the smallest defect rate and Saginaw has the largest. But are either of these differences statistically significant? We run the data through an anom and it produces this chart. The center line is the overall mean, the UDL is the upper decision line, and the LDL is the lower decision line. These two lines define a confidence interval, and in this example, uh, it's, uh, alpha is 95% for the confidence interval. These two lines are also reminiscent of the upper and lower control limits in control charts, which are used in the discipline of statistical process control. The individual dots show the means for each plant. We can see that both East Point and Saginaw are outside the decision lines, so there is a statistically significant difference in each case. We would probably want to investigate these two plants further to find out the root cause of these differences. Okay, that's it for our clarification of this confusing concept. If you like this video, please remember to press the thumbs up like button on your screen below. I'll be making more videos of some or most of the 60 plus concepts in the book if folks like you tell me more videos are wanted. Please subscribe to this channel to be notified when new videos are uploaded. Also, the website statisticsfromaz.com has a listing of available and planned videos. Videos like this one can be very helpful, but they're not very handy when you want to quickly look up something on the job, while studying, or during an open book exam. For that, nothing beats a book or an ebook. You can also learn more about those on the website. I'd recommend following my blog at statisticsfromaz.com slash blog. I've got some things there that hopefully you will find interesting, like a statistics tip of the week series, as well as posts showing that you are not alone if you're confused to buy statistics. I'll also be posting on the Facebook page, Statistics from A to Z, and on Twitter as at Stats A to Z.